In January 1991, as the world's eyes fixated on the Middle East, six old but tough low-level nuclear bombers were dispatched in haste. The Blackburn Buccaneers, almost considered relics, were built at the height of the Cold War and were not expected to see combat in the region. Despite initial reluctance to involve the Buccaneer in the Gulf War, plans changed rapidly and the units were given 72 hours to prepare for deployment. Following three days of frantic last-minute preparations, the Buccaneers, freshly painted in desert camouflage, flew to the front line. The aging S-2B Buccaneers had received a thorough makeover with deadly new laser technology. They would now be hunting in packs with Panavia tornadoes and unleashing a brand new type of war. The Blackburn Buccaneers, once considered relics of a bygone era, found themselves reborn in the most unexpected of circumstances. And now, a unique opportunity stands before you, inviting you to breathe life back into an aviation icon. The Spitfire Mark 1A, piloted by the valiant Pat Hughes, this extraordinary aircraft soared through the skies during the Battle of Britain, achieving a remarkable tally of 17 victories and affirming its pilot as Australia's legendary ace of aces. But there's more. The aircraft was recovered and awaits restoration, and now you can be part of the process. Discover the X4009 collection by Rec Watches. Three unique watches crafted from the genuine aluminum of the Spitfire Mark 1A X4009, each bearing the unique marks of a bygone era. The watches also pay homage to the timepieces worn by the brave pilots of World War II. And by acquiring any one of them, you will not only carry a piece of history on your wrist, but will contribute to the restoration of the immortal aircraft's fuselage. Visit www.recwatches.com and take advantage of our exclusive offer. Use promo code DARK for a 15% discount on your purchase, and wear your watch proudly. A Brave Challenger In the early 1950s, the Soviet Navy expanded its fleet to challenge Western naval power, a direct threat to the British Royal Navy. In response, they decided to acquire an attack aircraft for their carriers, with the purpose of attacking Soviet naval groups. Notably, the aircraft should fly at low altitudes and high speed and drop a nuclear bomb using a toss bombing technique. In June 1952, the British Navy formalized this requirement as Naval Staff Requirement No. 39. They wanted a two-seat, carrier-based aircraft that could carry a nuclear bomb internally. It should be able to fly at a speed of Mach 0.85 at an altitude of 200 feet and have a combat range of at least 460 miles. The aircraft should also have offensive radar and a radar altimeter. It should be able to carry a total weight of 4,000 pounds of weapons, be no longer than 51 feet in its stored configuration to fit on existing carrier elevators, and weigh no more than 45,000 pounds. The aircraft should also be able to refuel other planes in the air. Several British aircraft manufacturers submitted proposals for this requirement, and three finalists were chosen. The Armstrong Whitworth AW168, the Shorts PD-13, and the Blackburn B-103. Blackburn was not known for building warplanes at the time, but their B-103 design impressed the Navy. So was born the Blackburn Aircraft Company's NA-39, or B-103, which would gain fame as the Buccaneer in its production form. Distinctive Features Tough and fast, the Buccaneer was specifically designed for low-level strikes from aircraft carriers. Its sturdy structure and ability to operate at low altitudes over both land and sea made it a formidable force. Despite its functionality, the Buccaneer boasted a sleek appearance, with a slender midsection and broader sections near the wings. The aircraft featured moderately swept wings and a tailplane positioned high on the tail fin, creating a distinctive T-shape. To ensure smooth flight at low altitudes, the wings were kept relatively small, requiring high landing speeds. To overcome this challenge, engineers devised a Boundary Layer Control System, or BLC. This innovative system utilized a portion of the engine's airflow to blow over the flaps and tail, effectively providing de-icing capabilities and enabling it to operate from smaller British aircraft carriers. Its fuselage was designed using an area-ruled technique to minimize drag, while the wing route seamlessly integrated two jet engines. The aircraft accommodated a two-member crew in a tandem seating arrangement beneath a single sliding canopy, and a search radar was mounted in the nose. Air brakes were cleverly incorporated into a sideways opening bullet fairing at the rear of the fuselage, serving as a braking mechanism. The Buccaneer's fuselage was designed with expanded storage capacity while still fitting within the dimensions of carrier deck elevators. Additionally, its wings could fold up to 120 degrees, and the nose cone could pivot backward, 
providing easy access to the radar and reducing the aircraft's length. The tail cone could also open hydraulically to the sides, acting as an air brake and further reducing the aircraft's length. These features allowed for convenient transportation and storage on carriers. Two pylons were installed under each wing of the Buccaneer to carry various stores or weapons. Furthermore, the aircraft featured a rotating bomb bay door rather than a conventional bomb bay. This rotating door swiftly maneuvered to reduce aerodynamic interference, simplifying the release of weapons and facilitating the loading and servicing process. The bomb bay could also carry additional equipment, such as a reconnaissance camera pallet. A Hawker Siddeley Type In July 1955, the British Admiralty chose the B-103 design from three options. They wanted something that was not too conservative or too risky. The Armstrong Whitworth AW-168 was too conservative and would quickly become outdated. The Shorts PD-13 was too risky, despite being advanced. The Blackburn B-103 was the right balance and was selected. The Admiralty ordered 20 development batch or DB aircraft to speed up the process and minimize delays. They also wanted to work on different subsystems simultaneously. The development of the B-103 was kept secret. The prototype, called the Blackburn NA-39, first flew in April 1958. Two years later, Blackburn merged with Hawker Siddeley Aviation. After the merger, the company adopted a divisional structure and became the Hawker Blackburn Division, and all products were labeled as Hawker Siddeley types. The subsequent prototypes incorporated features for operational aircraft. Carrier trials started in early 1960, but were delayed. The initial version was called the Strike Mark I, or S-1, and by the end of 1961, all 20 DB aircraft had flown. Despite a few accidents, the flight test program progressed well, and the first Buccaneers were delivered to the Royal Navy in August 1961. The 801st Squadron became the first operational Buccaneer unit in July 1962, and they started their missions in 1963. The Buccaneers operated from various naval air stations, but Lossiemouth, Scotland, became closely associated with the aircraft. Originally, the 20 DB aircraft were kept by Blackburn for development and trials, but some were eventually modified for service and given to the Royal Navy. Clearance The design changed to accommodate the more powerful Rolls-Royce Spey engine, which was necessary for takeoff from aircraft carriers. The new version was called the HS Buccaneer Strike Mark II, which can be easily recognized by its sizable elliptical engine air intakes. Besides its conventional ordnance capabilities, the Buccaneer made a significant leap in military potential when it was granted clearance for nuclear weapons delivery back in 1965. This pivotal development allowed the aircraft to carry and deploy Redbeard and WE-177 freefall bombs. Impressively, these devastating weapons were stored internally within a rotating bomb bay door. In addition, another variant, the Strike Mark 50, was created as a land-based attack aircraft by the South African Air Force, with the notable lack of the wing folding feature found in the Royal Navy versions. Sixteen of these planes were sold, equipped with Bristol Siddeley BS-605 rocket-assisted engines. The specialized variant was created to handle operations in challenging airfields with high temperatures and altitudes. However, the rockets were seldom used and were eventually taken out. Territorial Rights Across its career, the Buccaneer regularly patrolled and participated in exercises in the North Sea, practicing its role in the event of a war with the Soviet Union. But later on, the improved S-2 type achieved a significant milestone when it became the first aircraft approved by the Federal Aviation Administration to cross the Atlantic Ocean without stopping or refueling. In 1967, Buccaneers from Lossiemouth were involved in bombing the stranded supertanker Torrey Canyon off the coast of Cornwall. The purpose was to set the oil on fire and prevent an environmental disaster. In 1972, Buccaneers from the 809th Naval Air Squadron, based on the aircraft carrier Ark Royal, undertook a 1,500-mile mission to demonstrate military presence over British Honduras, now Belize, shortly before its independence. The aim was to deter a possible invasion by Guatemala, which claimed territorial rights over the country. As for the RAF, in 1983, six Buccaneer S-2s were sent to Cyprus to assist British peacekeepers in Lebanon as part of Operation Pulsator. Two of these aircraft flew over Beirut in a show of force to intimidate insurgents rather than directly causing damage. After 1983, the responsibility for land strikes was mostly given to the newly introduced Tornado aircraft, 
and two buccaneer squadrons were assigned to maritime strike duties. Stellar service. In the RAF, buccaneers were equipped with laser designation equipment specifically for the use of paveway laser-guided bombs. They played a crucial role in the first Gulf War of 1991, showcasing their capabilities and earning recognition for their exceptional service. During the Gulf War, six buccaneers were equipped with desert camouflage and additional equipment and departed from Lossy Mouth to the Middle East on January 26, 1991. In combat, each attack formation typically included four tornadoes and two buccaneers. The buccaneers carried laser designator pods and acted as backups for each other in case of equipment malfunctions. The first combat mission took place on February 2nd, attacking the Asawaira Road Bridge at a medium altitude. Buccaneers supported numerous missions, destroying around 20 road bridges, which hindered the mobility and communications of the Iraqi army. As coalition ground forces advanced into Iraq, the Buccaneers switched to airfield bombing missions, targeting bunkers, runways, and any sighted aircraft. Guided by the Tornado's laser-guided ordnance, Buccaneers often conducted dive bombing runs on remaining targets. In one instance, two Buccaneers destroyed two Iraqi transport aircraft on the ground. Throughout the Gulf War, Buccaneers flew 218 missions, designating targets for other aircraft and dropping 48 laser-guided bombs. End of an era. The production line consisted of a total of 144 aircraft, which encompassed various versions. This included 20 HS Buccaneer NA-39 development aircraft, 40 HS Buccaneer S Mark I, and 84 SH Buccaneer S Mark II. Initially, the Buccaneer was planned to remain in service until the late 1990s, but it was decided that the Buccaneer would be retired early. After the Royal Naval Service retired their carriers, a total of 62 HS Buccaneer S-2 aircraft were transferred to the RAF. To bolster the fleet, an additional 49 new-build HS Buccaneer S Mark IIb aircraft were also introduced. These newer aircraft boasted several enhancements, including a higher all-up weight, a larger weapons bay, increased fuel capacity, and an impressive 16,000-pound weapon load. The Buccaneers' nuclear delivery duties were discontinued in 1991, and by mid-1993, there was a single squadron still operating the Buccaneer, which retired in March 1994. Be a part of one of the most important Spitfire restoration efforts by going to www.recwatches.com and claiming a 15% discount using the promo code DARK on any of the limited edition timepieces. Take part in preserving history while indulging in luxury.